All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. We decided to get some street cred today and head down to Andrew Yang's Los Angeles rally. We actually went man in the street to see what people actually at the rally had to say about Andrew Yang. And, and I think this is actually one of the most important things that we do, Cody, because so much of media nowadays is just through their filter, their interpretation, their spin. We wanted to actually see who the Yang gang is. And my mind was pleasantly blown. I don't know, I don't know what your mind was, but my mind was pleasantly blown um, in, in terms of the diversity of the crowd. I mean, from all kinds of political backgrounds, I definitely like that. And I was honestly, I'll admit the cynical half of me was thinking I was going to hear a lot of people saying, if I got a thousand bucks a month, I would just like smoke it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I will have to say, I mean, full disclosure, I, that, that, you know, I might use my thousand dollars a month on video games, but if someone put a camera in my face, I'd say, oh, dude, I'm going to make a nonprofit that helps, you know, homeless dogs find home. But, but yeah, I, I, I kind of was expecting a little bit more of that because a lot of people, when they look at their current financial situation, and you drop a thousand dollars a month in their lap. Really, the only people I would see planning to blow the money now, who knows what actually happens, but are people that have money already saying, dude, if you just gave me a thousand bucks, I have my rent, I have my health care, I'm just gonna spend it on whatever I want. But there's a lot of people out there who, like many of us, are I don't want to even say struggling, that's the wrong word, but you know, your finance are something you really got to worry about. So it is really pleasant to see what would people do if you know, from, from the heavens, a thousand dollars would descend on your uh, on your bank account every month. All right, yeah, exactly. So uh, without further ado, ado, we are actually just going to cut to a series of clips of the Yang Gang actually telling us, in their own words, what they would do with $1,000 a month. What are you going to do with a bag, Yang Gang? Let's take a look. So um, UBI is your big thing. What would you do with your 1000 bucks a month? Uh, definitely pay off some debt. Um, so I'm a college student. I started off my career with $29,000 in debt. So if I can affect that in any type of way, I'm definitely for it. All right, your college was inexpensive. I like it. I should have gone there. <laughs> what about you? What would you do with 1000 bucks a month? Bills. Bills and bills, actually. That's it. <laughs> what would you do with your UBI, with your $1,000 a month? Well, I have a nonprofit, so it would probably all go to the nonprofit and to create jobs of the future that do not destroy us. That's the, the premise of my nonprofit. But uh, we really just need to change how work is done so that it benefits everybody. So people's uh, hard work is, is not just going to the corporate overlords, but it's spreading out and benefiting everyone. And I'm not talking socialism, just, you know, everybody deserves to, just like in the 1950s, be able to pay their bills and take care of their family. That's, you know, all America is asking for. Okay, so what would you do with $1,000 if you got it? What would I do with $1,000 if I got it? What would you do with the bag, baby? What would I do with the bag? Uh, I always wanted to become a pilot, and I love helicopters. So maybe I'd save enough money to do that stuff. I, 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 I love it. And uh, what else? Like, take more vacations. I love traveling. I love flying. When you take a vacation, you get on an airplane. And maybe I'll start my own business. Maybe make enough money to have my own private jet. The sky's the limit. What would you do with your $1,000 a month of universal basic income? Well, I just moved to Culver City, um, so I'd spend a lot of it in my actual community, and I'd also spend a lot of it on bills and the mortgage. What would you do with your $1,000 a month? Um, honestly, if I had $1,000 a month, I would probably spend it on um, either university, I would probably find like some ways to invest it, um, or I would just, um, yeah, th those are the two biggest. I'd say university investing. All right, what would you do with your $1,000 a month? Um, pay off my books and my tuition. All right, so we're going to go Blade Runner here. If you were a human, what would you do with a thousand bucks a month? Uh, for me, a thousand dollars a month, I would have to pay my student loan debt because I'm sure that's what a lot of people here in LA probably have to deal with. So that will go down to there first. 
pay my rent, pay my bills, just get all that stress out of my system so I can actually do things that I enjoy. All right, what's the... Um... Joy, I'm a robot. You just program me to do what I want. Okay, so um, what would you do with $1,000 a month if you had it? You're a big fan of UBI. What would you do with it? Uh, probably invest it or put it towards rent or something. You know, it's just it would just pad the yeah pad pad the income for paying for expenses and stuff. So okay, awesome. What about you? What would you do with a thousand bucks a month? Right now, for me, I mean, I think the most important thing that UBI does for me would allow me to go, be more free to choose jobs and not have my health insurance bound to that job because I could afford to purchase it with UBI and still have some money to invest and go out and, and on top of that, by doing so, it'll help stimulate the economy. So I guess uh, just starting out, he's mostly famous for the universal basic income. What would you do with the bag? What would you do with your thousand dollars a month? Well, I work full time, but if I had that extra thousand dollars a month, I would cut back some of my hours and I would go back to school to further myself in the workforce. Okay, so school, what would you do? Likewise, I'd come back. I, I'd cut back on work. At the moment, I work close to thirty-five hours a week. And you know, that's kind of a shit time when you're a full-time student. Can I curse on this? My bad. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it definitely it's taxing on you both like you know mentally and physically maybe you're not physically exhausted but your hands hurt you know I'm a cook so you know cooking eight hours a day just it kills me so by the time I get home I have to do homework I'm just so defeated I don't really feel like doing it so that would definitely help me out you know with the bills obviously that's a given but you know that income alone would help me uh, just kind of use it as a surrogate for a job I wouldn't really have to work as much and I'd be able to invest it back into my studies. Okay, so um, Cody, I mean that was a that was actually surprisingly uh, a diverse group and b diverse group of answers. Um, what'd you think? Uh, yeah, I mean the biggest takeaway for me is like we were saying earlier is the idea that. Most people, when asked, said if you gave them $1,000 a month, what would they do? I would say the biggest answer we heard was in either a roundabout way or a direct way, invest either in myself or in a business. I mean, I look at paying off student loans as kind of retroactively investing in yourself because you kind of already committed to or investing in yourself. Or just giving the government a bunch of undeserved okay, functionally, money. <laughs> functionally, yes. But what I mean is in, in the sense of like that, you, college should be an investment into yourself, right? Yeah. And so people paying off student loans, that's one way. And then... We had another person who came. I mean, shout out to my my man Ariel over there, who said that I'm gonna get my try to get my pilot's license. Maybe I can turn my yeah. love of travel into you know a, a business. Like I can become a a, a pilot that flies other people in their yeah, vacation. Speaking of shout outs, we got to give a big time shout out also to Earl. We had me and Cody had an interesting experience. It was the first time where any of our fans, that's you guys, well, unless there's some of you guys that follow us that really hate us, but at least for the ones that like us. Thank you. And please do come up and approach us when you see at these see us at these events. We actually had two or three people come up and say, oh, you guys are problem solver politics. I follow you. I, I, I love your videos. And one of them was uh, one of our first subscribers that had actually reached out to us on Instagram. So um, that was really cool. So anyway, um, I agree that. I was cynical in the beginning as to the answers I thought I would hear. And to be honest with you. You can tell when people are covering for themselves to not look back. A and I didn't really sense that. I, I will be honest that I did not really sense that. I still have a lot of deep questions about the UBI. I like that Milton Friedman put a lot of thought into it. I like that Thomas Paine put a lot of thought into it. I like that we have data from a miniature version of it going on in Alaska with their whopping 600,000 people. But I, I do question uh, if it would cause inflation. I know some econ uh, economists would be like, what a stupid question. But um, maybe not specific monetary inflation of the actual individual value of each dollar. But well, if uh, not, markets level. would somehow just adjust in a way that the UBI would be rendered useless. Well, I just feel like on some level, like, right, like, yeah, it'll, it has to cause some inflation. Like, like if $1,000 a month yeah. per citizen was pumped into the economy, I mean, on some level, yeah, I, I just think the real argument, and this is one that I don't have the numbers or really yeah. the, the economic ability to, to kind of get into. But I think the real more interesting debate is what is the impact of that inflation and if it's still a net positive. Because yes. if there is some inflation, exactly. but it's a net positive, then who cares? Yes, exactly. And just like, Tom, um, not Thomas Jefferson, I'm sorry, John F. Kennedy said, every large piece of legislation has unintended consequences. I would really like to get ahead of and anticipate or at least investigate to the best of our scientific ability 
what some of those potential unintended consequences would be. So anyway, um, if you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share this with all of your friends and join in the conversation, please. We would love to know what you guys would do with your UBI, and we'd love to highlight some of those activities um, in a later video if we can. But please, make sure to comment. Tell us what you do with the UBI. Share this video with your friends. This is Problem Solver Politics. See you next time. Oh, one last thing. Uh, just shout-outs again to our boys at Daniel over at American Job Factory. Oh, yeah. Shout-out, Daniel. Mar sorry, American Jobs Factory, and then Ariel over at Revolutionary Thinking. Uh, great meeting both of you guys. Peace.